Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is my Intel Arc A380 and I've dragged it out of its box for another video because it owes me £170 and I'm determined to get the money back somehow. If you saw my review of this thing, you'll know it's a pretty weak card but it also has a few driver issues to overcome. This is Cyberpunk 2077 and ever since it's released I promised to follow its progress on PC in the form of videos testing out each in-game update and today we'll be doing that again. The latest patch 1.61 may be a bit more exciting than previous ones for a pretty solid reason. The latest update adds FSR 2.1 support, which is basically a new and improved version of FSR 1.0. Games with FSR support let us choose from a specific preset in the options menu, be it performance, balanced, quality, etc, etc, and the preset we choose determines how low the game will be rendered internally, before being upscaled to the display's native output. FSR 1.0 improves performance but also creates a noticeable drop in visual quality. Games with FSR 2.1 support however, like Spider-Man, do the same thing but the drop in visual clarity is less noticeable and the addition of a sharpness slider can mean that it is harder to determine between an upscaled image and one displayed native 1080p. Back to the subject of today's video then, and how does Cyberpunk 2077 compare in terms of native resolution, FSR 1.0 and the newly added FSR 2.1? I've got a side-by-side -side screenshot of all three scenarios, but the truth is that video compression is going to make the differences less clear to spot. The long and short of it is that native 1080p looks like, well, native 1080p, FSR 1.0 set to balanced mode looks a little blurrier than native 1080p, but FSR 2.1 set to balanced mode again looks a lot closer to native, even when the newly added configurable sharpness slider is left at the 0.5 default setting. I should mention that this sharpness slider doesn't really impact the performance too much, whether you have it set all the way down to zero or all the way up to one. There was a one frames per second difference on average. So I'd set this slider to whatever your personal preference is. Now onto the subject of performance, of course, we are testing more entry level hardware in today's one, as per the usual theme of the channel. Using the balanced FSR preset with FSR 2.1 in game version 1.61, and Cyberpunk will perform worse than it did beforehand by quite a noticeable margin. In return for the performance sacrifice, we are getting much better image clarity, one that is honestly much harder to distinguish from native. If you do have a lower end or entry level graphics card and you want to use the same FSR preset as you were in Cyberpunk version 1.6, you'll probably find that FSR 2.1 is more of a performance hog, and this could be detrimental to your experience if, like I say, you're using a card that really can't afford to give up any more frames. That said, there is a silver lining. Because FSR 2.1 looks a lot better than 1.0, you could use a more aggressive preset this time around. For example, here is how the performance FSR 2.1 preset compares to the balanced FSR 1.0 preset in the previous version of the game. Now the game is rendering at a lower resolution with the performance preset selected, but because we are getting much better upscaling this time around, you could argue that both images look just as good as each other. In fact, the FSR 2.1 image looks a little better, in my opinion. If I show you some actual performance though, you'll probably be able to tell that the game still isn't running as smoothly as it was before in version 1.6, despite the more aggressive FSR preset selected this time around. It's close, but it's not quite the same. FSR 2.1 is a welcome addition as far as visual quality is concerned, but it's not going to be ideal for all hardware configurations. Next then, I thought I'd move on to this, the AMD Athlon 3000G with its integrated Vega 3i GPU. This thing is somehow still going strong, especially since I've started running it with the graphics overclocked to 1600 MHz. It's also paired with 16 gigs of dual channel DDR4 memory clocked at 3200 MHz, so nothing that special. 
This requires that we use the Ultra Performance FSR preset, especially if we want to select a native output resolution of 1080p. Now here is how the game compares when the Ultra Performance preset is selected in both version 1.6 and 1.61 of the game using FSR 1 and FSR 2.1 respectively. It's a night and day difference to be honest. That said the poor Athlon 3000G does suffer as far as performance goes and that is a shame because we really can't afford to lose any more frames. Before the update, when using FSR 1.0 as shown in this footage, the game actually hit 30 frames per second which may actually come as a big surprise, I know it did to me. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, especially in Night City, but it was acceptable and the game did average 30 frames per second overall. The 1.1% lows weren't great, but this 2 core 4 thread CPU with its onboard graphics was doing a much better job than I could have anticipated. Since the 1.61 update however, things have changed. With the same ultra performance FSR preset, this time using FSR 2.1 of course, we were seeing a much lower frame rate this time around. This update has effectively transformed the AMD Athlon 3000G's performance from just about playable if you're very desperate to you'll get 30 FPS if you're lucky. Now the thing is we can't actually go any lower in terms of an FSR preset either, so we're sort of limited to dropping the native resolution to say 900p instead and then using FSR on top of that. Which is a bit of a shame. For mid-range and higher end cards, the addition of FSR 2.1 is more of a welcome one for the sake of the visual improvements and the performance improvements over native resolution of course, because compared to native resolution there still will be a massive performance jump when enabling FSR 2.1. For lower end hardware users, the reduction in performance at similar quality levels could potentially turn your current just about playable frame rate into an unplayable one, so that is also worth keeping in mind. Furthermore, I went back and did a couple of quick comparisons at native resolution and found that versions 1.6 and 1.61 of Cyberpunk perform pretty much identically at native, so if you don't want to use FSR at all and you were just wondering about the performance compared in both updates then you shouldn't actually lose any with this new update but that's what I found with the hardware I tested specifically still I don't think you're gonna see any significant changes with any other hardware all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching I'd love to hear how the game now performs for you if you've updated it with FSR 2.1 enabled of course how has it impacted your lower end or mid-range hardware if you like this video, be sure to leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.